IRS statute of limitations after an amended tax return. Does an amended tax return extend the IRS statute of limitations? In general, the ordinary IRS statute of limitations for the IRS to complete its audit and assess additional taxes is not changed by the filing of an amended return. That means that if the original return was subject to a three-year statute of limitations, then the time for the IRS to audit and assess additional tax still ends three years from the date of the filing of the original return or the ordinary April 15 due date, whichever was later. However, if the original return was subject to an exception to the ordinary three-year time period, that exception would still apply even if the amended return corrects the issue. For example, if the original return is found to be fraudulent, an amended return correcting the misstatements does not reinstate the three-year period in place of the indefinite period applicable to the civil fraud penalty. A minor exception is found in 26 U.S.C. section 6501c7, which extends the IRS statute of limitations just 60 days from the filing of an amended return for the IRS to assess the additional income tax on the amended return. If the amended return was filed within the statutory period, but less than 60 days left. 26 U.S.C. Section 6501A provides the general rule, except as otherwise provided in this section, the amount of any tax imposed by this title shall be assessed within three years after the return was filed, whether or not such return was filed on or after the date prescribed, or if the tax is payable by stamp at any time after such tax became due and before the expiration of three years after the date on which any part of such tax was paid, and no proceeding in court without assessment for the collection of such tax shall begin after the expiration of such period. For purposes of this chapter, the term return means the return required to be filed by the taxpayer and does not include a return of any person from whom the taxpayer has received an item of income, gain, loss, deduction, or credit. Section 6501 contains other exceptions to this rule. For example, allowing more time where there is a substantial understatement, six years, or an indefinite period where there is fraud on the return. The rule that an amended return does not change the IRS's statute of limitations period has been well established through a number of court cases, mainly based on the phrase in the statute, the return. The phrase the return has a definite article and a singular subject. Therefore, it can only mean one return and that the return contemplated by the act under which it was filed. Thus, once the statutory return commencing the statute of limitations has been filed, a subsequent amended return has no effect on the statute of limitations. IRS statute of limitations where amended return claims a refund. It should be noted that the above only applies to the IRS's ability to assess additional tax beyond that stated in the original return. The law discussed here does not affect the IRS's ability to consider whether to allow or deny a claim for refund submitted by way of an amended return or to make a claim for an erroneous refund issued to the taxpayer under 26 U.S.C. Section 7405. The IRS statute of limitations for an amended return claiming a refund is under 26 U.S.C. section 6511A, which provides in relevant part, claim for credit of refund of an overpayment of any tax imposed by this title in respect of which tax the taxpayer is required to file a return shall be filed by the taxpayer within three years from the time the return was filed or two years from the time the tax was paid, whichever of such periods expires the latter, or if no return was filed by the taxpayer within two years from the time the tax was paid. There are exceptions within that section for bad debt loss carrybacks, NOL, and capital loss carrybacks, foreign tax credits, qualified plan recaptures, credit carrybacks, and uniformed service retirement pay reductions. 
but the carryback provisions are heavily mitigated by the Trump tax law changes in 2018. Daniel W. Layton, the author of this post, is a former IRS trial attorney and former federal prosecutor who was tasked with handling criminal tax prosecutions and civil litigation, including tax refund suits, lien enforcement, and foreclosures. As a tax attorney in private practice in Newport Beach, he uses his knowledge of IRS procedures and rules to keep the IRS in check and protect his clients' rights. He may be contacted at 949-301-9829. Voice assistance provided by legal assistant Benjamin Tu.